Good morning, everybody. This is Victoria, your dog guru, and today I'm going through some more of your questions, giving you some tips, and seeing where the show takes us. So let me pull up my first one. Okay, this one comes from Sarah H. in South Dakota. My puppy is howling at night. What do I do? Sarah, first of all, congratulations on your new puppy. Secondly, I should tell you that new home, new environment, new smells, no litter mate, and no mom means he or she is probably a little overwhelmed right now, as I'm sure you are since your sleeping schedule's probably been interrupted. In the first few nights that you have your dog home with you, or specifically your puppy, there's a lot of adjusting that's going to take place. So first of all, make sure your dog is getting a lot of interaction with you throughout the day and plenty of stimulation, so this way, come bed time they're tired just like you are. Also if you have an old pillowcase or a dog blanket you can rub it all over you and then give it to your dog at nighttime so they have that constant reassurance scent wise that someone is there with them. If he's in a different room from you I would consider bringing the crate or pen into your room so this way he doesn't feel quite so lonely and disoriented. If you don't want to do that, another thing you can do is play a radio on really, really low, like talk radio. So this way they're getting something to focus on rather than the fact that they're just on their own. But stay strong. I mean, honestly, the first few nights are always the hardest on the puppy. So just get them into a routine. Don't make a big deal about bedtime. Before you know it, he's going to be bonding to you and the fears of leaving mom and siblings behind are also going to be behind you. Okay, next question. This one comes from Kaylin M. in New York. Kaylin says, my dog never comes when called. Okay, so first of all, you need to take into account when you're calling them. So if you're calling them and then you're bringing them to the vet, probably a poor association. So go ahead and whenever you have to go somewhere that you know for sure they're not going to enjoy... Don't call them wherever they are. Just go and retrieve them yourself. Don't make a huge event of it. And certainly don't say, Fluffy, come. Because if you end up at the vets, they're going to feel a little betrayed. (laughs) And next time when you want them to come when called, they're going to be avoiding you like the plague. You want a really positive association with telling your dog to come when called. Something that gets their attention and amplifies the likelihood that you're going to get them to come to you. So you can use little bits of steak for this. I mean, come when called when used properly is a life-saving cue. Say your dog is in the middle of the street and a car is coming. You need to know that when you say come, they're coming to you immediately. So while you're practicing it, make sure they're getting paid. Make sure that they feel like coming to you is the best idea they've had all week. A great place to practice this is in a hallway where you can call them back and forth, especially if you have a friend that can call them and make it into a game. You know, you call them, give them a tree, then your friend calls them, gives them a tree, and you go back and forth like that for a little while. The key to come when called, aside from adding incentive and value, is really offering a heavy-duty incentive. Say your dog likes to go on car rides. So if you say, Fluffy, come, and then you hop in the car and just drive around the street for a second, chances are Fluffy is going to want to run to find out if you're going on a car ride. And you can work it into your everyday schedule. So say it's dinner time. If you say, Fluffy, come, and they barrel into the room for dinner because they know what you're making, in that moment, not only have you marked your cue, but you've utilized it in your everyday life. My biggest tip when it comes to come when called is really always make it something positive. Never end a game after having your dog come to you. Always make it worth their while. And when you're in an extreme circumstance and you go and retrieve your dog, do not get upset with them. Don't focus on the fact that it took you so long to get a hold of them and they didn't listen to you because Fido isn't dumb if he's not going to want to come to you if you're in a bad mood once he gets there. And my last tip is add in a hand signal, one that's easy to see from a distance. I've mentioned before, dogs are really visual, so the more areas where you can connect with their mind at a distance, the higher your chances are of them returning when you ask. Last question is from Eric S. in Newark, and he says, my dog pees on everything. What am I doing wrong? (laughs) So there's a lot of reasons why dogs pee on things. Both males and females are known to mark. Believe it or not, a lot of people think, well, it's just male dogs. No, females can do it too. Marking is actually a prime source of social doggy communication. So while it's annoying to us, it's communication for them. Females may not be lifting their leg 
but they're sending the same social messages that your male dog is leaving their mark. So a few things to consider. First of all, if your dog is intact, meaning he hasn't been neutered, chances are higher he's going to mark. The main challenge with marking is that once they start the process, it's really hard to derail. A few keys to the process are, first of all, make sure he's always in sight. If he's not in sight and you're not crating him in that time, you're probably going to walk into a mess or just be smelling this urine in the air and not know where it's coming from. So keep your eyes on the situation, and by that I mean your dog. Next, make sure you're deodorizing wherever he's marked before properly. There are a few specific products I really like for this. Odoban, O-D-O-B-A-N, you can find it at Walmart, is a great one. And the other one I used to use was the Woolite Pet Stain Remover. They're not expensive, you can use them over and over, but it neutralizes the odor. It'll remove stains in your carpet if you've got those. But if you have a rug that he's just gone back to over and over and over, I'd toss the rug. I mean, he's already made his mark there. This is a ritualized behavior, so you're not gonna get anywhere by keeping the rug there. But moving forward, deodorize immediately. It's also a good idea when you're out on walks and your dog is marking things outside to praise that, because while you don't want it in your house, out on the fire hydrant doesn't matter worth a lick. So go ahead and let them do that and then say, what a good boy, good job. Feedback is key. Management is key. So you need to make sure you're catching him in the act if he tries it at home, at which point you go, ah, ah, and take him straight outside, show him where he is allowed to mark, give him lots of praise and attention where he goes, when you need him to, where you need him to. If you don't catch him in the act, you just have to clean it up and act like you never saw it because bringing a dog back to somewhere that they've marked or had an accident and showing them, this is what I don't want, no, no, no. While he may end up looking really guilty, it's just a physical appeasement exercise. He's not actually making the connection that he shouldn't have gone there in the first place. So keep that in mind. Thanks to everybody that wrote in. I really appreciate your questions. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to our podcast so you can get the latest episodes. And if you'd like to hear your question on our show, go ahead and send it to our Facebook page, which you'll find at facebook.com forward slash dog guru podcast. You can also reach us on Twitter at ask underscore dog guru. So follow us on there and then tweet us. This has been Victoria, your dog guru. Have a nice day, everybody. Namaste.